Hey guys, today we are going to talk about cards, 10 cards that have gone up in price. And these cards, for the most part, were bulk. And in my opinion, I don't know who's buying this stuff, but it makes sense. If you grew up playing these cards, then you have a attachment to them that cannot be defined in money. Therefore, they are collector's items. Magic the Gathering cards have finally, finally, the large majority of the older bulk stuff become a collector's item. I mean, you've always had your Power 9. Yes, they're not really played in any formats. I know that the strongest cards Magic, blah, 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 but Standard and Modern are the most popular formats and Draft as well, by far, and you cannot play those cards in those formats. Therefore, they are kind of just a collector's item well of knowledge this card i must have like a few dozen copies of this card i might have uh, shown you it i don't know essentially it is bulk and now three dollars <laughs> it's not bad right i mean this is a card that you could not you would have to pay someone to take this card away from you and now it is probably buy listing i assume it would eventually buy list for at least 50 cents because it is an old card and it is a relative it's an okay card it's not the most amazing card but still nonetheless i like it it is an artifact repentant blacksmith this is a card i grew up with i played this card quite a bit i felt like it was very good as well as the other flyer, I think it was like two double white or it cost five for like a free four flyer with protection from red. And this was very good. It couldn't be lightning bolted, which was always a problem in Magic Gathering. Even from the very beginning, everyone knew lightning bolt was very, very good. So this was the anti lightning bolt. It is now $4. These older cards, they, my assumption is they will never lose value. They will always at least be this price and it is a correction. It is a price correction based on the availability and the number of Magic players. So if Magic players, Mark Rosewater said there are 9 million female Magic players, just female Magic players. And let's assume there's 11 million male. So 20 million Magic players, well, there's not that much Arabian Nights out there. There's just not that much. So... Meh. All right, next, uh, we're going to talk about Fast Bond. This is the beta version, but I will talk about the other versions as well. I know that there's a white-bordered version. I'm guessing it's unlimited. I don't know if there's a revised version. I know there is a white border one because that's what I have. It's a good card. Um, as we go more and more in time, these cards are going to be harder, harder to find. And right now would be, so if the question was, when is the best time to have purchased these cards? The answer was 10, 20 years ago. But when's the second best time? It would be today. I don't see these cards going that much down in price because there's not, there's just not that many of them. And even if there was, even if there was just a ton of collections so even if there was just a ton of collections out there that no one knew was valuable, these things, there's now the internet. Everyone has the internet. You're not going to find the epic Craigslist deal where you just have a bunch of beta cards and you just hit the jackpot. That's no longer possible. Back maybe before the internet or before mobile phones became had a lot of smart plans, smart data plans, you could, but that was a long time ago. All right, Mox Diamond, it is, for every reason I mentioned in a previous video, it's still going up. I don't see, so let's talk about this because pretty much I avoid this topic quite a bit. Reserve list cards as well as old cards as well as dual lands and all this stuff. Until they get rid of the reserve list, there's only one, way, there's only one direction that these cards can go up in. I just gave you away their direction. There's only one direction the cards can go, and that's up. That's because there's less and less of them. Some of them get destroyed 
by floods. You know, Houston had a flood, Florida had a flood. I'm sure some magic collections were destroyed. I'm sure some Mox Diamonds were destroyed in the floods just given how devastating they were. You're not going to find these easily. You're not going to find even this one. Portal Second Age is a very difficult set to find. And these cards will continue to go up in price as more and more people as more and more people really just want to play the cards they grew up with. It's a combination of those people who couldn't afford the Predatory Night Stalker back in the day. This was considered a really cool card. Um, the Night Stalkers in Portal, I believe, in Portal Second Kingdom, they had guns. When is the last time you really saw guns in Magic? Magic is fantasy, so therefore most of its art and lore doesn't have guns. But these guys had like rifles and shotguns and they're just like, you know, it's like cool. When I mean, things were less... Mm. I, I guess they were less PR back then. Now everything has to be like filtered. But back then they all had guns, right? And you're like a little kid and you're looking at these guys with guns and you're like, yeah, awesome. Amazing. Night Stalkers all have guns. Great. I'm going to play Night Stalkers. And that was a deck. And that was a very hard deck to put together as a little kid. Uh, next, the original Commander products, the... Shards have always been very good. Some of the cards will always be good, even if they're reprinted. They will be good forever. And what characteristics make them good forever? Here is repeat repeatability for one cost. So whenever you play a creature, you get to destroy an artifact. Well, I mean, there's so many. It's so ring. There's so many good enchantments in the EDH. And it's repeatability, right? Whenever you play a creature, you get to disenchant. So you get so much value. The one key element in Magic the Gathering is if you don't have to pay the casting cost to get a relatively good effect, it's going to be a good card. It's just way, even if it's not a good card today, it will be a good card tomorrow when another card is printed. So the best example I have of this is Sahili. I realized Sahili had a copy mechanic. I thought it was kind of cool. And I would not have realized that standard, the, the next set over, they would give her the infinite combo, which made her the most powerful deck. I mean, people can argue if she was a good deck or not. It was so good they banned it. I would just put it that way. I mean, there's no arguing. If it wasn't good, it will, if it was not dominate, if it did not dominate FNM like it did, then why ban it, right? It was good. But eventually I figured that, you know, there's other cards like that in Modern. She has a combo in ED8. I mean, it's, play it's still playable today. I still like her a lot. Um, not at the current price. I feel like she will drop out the rotation, but I wouldn't mind a whole binder of her because unique abilities with infinite combos or good. Now, Chromatic, I know a lot of people were, you know, oh, this card's gonna get hit, it got hit, it did get hit in one deck, but it's so good. It's so good that they will save this. I feel like they were gonna wait until it hits 20, and then it will get a reprint in some type of uh, EDH Masters or something like that. They're gonna make EDH Masters. I can almost guarantee you that's what's next. All right, uh, back to Shadowmoor. I have always loved this card. I played it as my EDH commander one time. Tokens was always good. Tokens will always be good. So there's certain things that you have to understand. Zombies will always be good. Yes, Eldritch Moon and its zombies are going to rotate out. But guess what's going to happen? Two years from now, we'll have another Eldritch Moon set. We'll call it Return to Eldritch Moon by Jace. And that set will spike the price of all the zombies that we previously had. Now, you have to, obviously, you have to pick the good zombies, right? You can't just pick, like, every random zombie. You need to highlight the good ones, like Relentless Dead, the ones that have potential in modern. I, I, I say that very lightly, like a tier 4 zombie deck, maybe. Buy them and just wait in two years. The same can be said for tokens. Eventually, a commander deck will have tokens in it. Eventually, we'll get another zombie commander deck, or we'll get another set where zombies are quite featured. Like, actually, Amaket would be one that comes to mind. But 
Anyway, so here's an interesting one that has snuck up in price. I love these ones because you can get them in bulk at your local game store. It's a really good way to add value to your trade binder. A lot of cards go up and down in price on a daily basis. So especially the bulk, the store owner is not really going to highlight the bulk. They're just happy to get rid of it. The high end cards, yes, they're going to know if the price goes up and down, especially if it goes up. Uh, but for the bulk, since it's in the 25 cent per card pile or the 5 cent per card pile, you can just find a lot of hits and you can trade a playset of this into something like a $10 card. People might you know, need a playset of this for a modern deck or something. And you trade it in for a $10 card or you add it in as an extra or you just kind of package it together. That's the way to trade up. You want to trade up. And that's the way I trade, and that's the way my binder is always so healthy. I don't even need to worry about my binder. It's just always going to be very healthy. All right. Let's go to end with this card. I have probably a bazillion of this card. I have found four of them. I have no idea what the other ones are. But I know that this is a card that, quote, the very definition of bulk. My gosh, this card was bad back in the day. I, I don't... Let me try to explain it to you. If you were, so the destroy any card is pretty cool and the picture is really awesome, but it costs six. Even back then, you had lightning bolt. The lightning bolt could probably hit mostly what you wanted. And then you had lightning strike and I caught that cost four and can hit for four at instant speed. This is sorcery speed. I guarantee you somebody who hasn't played magic in a long time will have this as an uncommon, 50 copies of this uncommon because it was so not desirable back in the day that the, a lot of these cards that have been going up in price, you couldn't get rid of them. Like you literally could not get rid of them. The only way that you would that they would disappear is if you threw them in a the trash can. Otherwise, no one's going to trade for a Desert Twister back when Arabian Nights was legal. No one wanted a Desert Twister at six. Like it didn't make any sense. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.